Hi, I'm Lauren Paradise, the librarian for DASH, and in this video I'll be giving you the steps to do one of the research data tasks I most commonly get asked about, how to get census data onto your map in ArcGIS, specifically ArcMap. The census website has a page where you can download a zip file or geodatabase with shapefiles for counties, census tracts, or other geographic divisions, along with the Census or American Community Survey data and projections for that area. You can get to this site from the GIS section of the library's DASH guide at lib.manhattan.edu slash dash slash GIS and scroll to the link that says Tigerline Demographic Maps. When you start off at this site, you first want to figure out what geographic division will help you the most. That depends on what you want to be comparing the census data to. If you are just looking at an individual borough in New York City, and you have point level data, like where 311 calls are, you'll probably want census tract level data. We are going to get more into this example later. If you are comparing county level initiatives within the same state, you'd want county level data. If you want to compare election results to census data, you'd want to pick the congressional district if you were looking at federal data, or state legislative data if you were interested in state-level results. For these categories, the ones that don't let you pick the state first, you are downloading data for that geographic division for the whole country. That's why the files are so big. So you'll need to have a shapefile for your state or the smaller area in that state that you're most interested in. So you can clip the shapefile that covers the whole country into just the part of it that covers your state or other area of interest. We'll get into how to clip later in this video. Within this video, I'll be showing you how to get the census tract shapefile with its corresponding data for all of New York State, clip it to just New York City, join the shapefile to the data, and then symbolize an aspect of that data for the census tracts of the map. When you know how to do this, you'll be able to apply that knowledge to other levels of census data and other locations. To get the census tract level data, go to the bottom of the page and in the Select State drop-down under Census Tract, choose New York. It may take a bit to download. When it is done, move it to whatever folder you've set up access to in your catalog in ArcMap. Open a new ARC map, and then open the zip file that you've just downloaded in the catalog. You'll see that it has two different kinds of data, the shapefile of all the census tracts, and tables that have a number and a short descriptive title. These are the tables that you will look at TigerLine's documentation in order to see which one has the data you want to put on your map. More on that later in the video. Drag the shapefile onto your map and it will show up on your screen as the outline of New York State, but cut up into chunks of varying size. Now if you try and join and map data for this whole state, it's going to take forever. And whenever you move around on the map, ArcGIS will spend time calculating and maybe even crash. In this case, we're only interested in New York City, so I'm going to clip this file to just show the tracts in New York City. I have in my catalog a borough map of NYC, which I got from NYC's Bites of the Big Apple site, which is also linked to on the GIS section of the DASH research guide. I'll drag it on top of the census map. Then I'll zoom to this layer, and you'll see that it lines up with the part of the larger census map that's over New York City. Next, I'll choose Geoprocessing, and then Clip. For input features, I'll choose the census tract layer, since that's what I'd like to be clipped. For clip features, I'll choose the borough layer, since that's what I want it to use as a guide for what to clip from the census tract map. As for the output feature, I'll name it ACS underscore 2017 underscore just NYC. When that finishes, turn off the other layers and you should just have a map of the census tract cropped to the borders of NYC's boroughs. Next, you'll want to be joining this map to whichever table has the information that you want to visualize. To know which table this is, you need to go back to the Tiger Line website and look up the technical documentation for the ACS shapefile that you chose. 
Just note that this information is also downloaded in the zip file, just in case you're in a situation where you have to work on this without internet access. I'll be showing you on the website since it's easier for me to search in the web browser. You can decide if you'd rather use this metadata table when you actually work on this. Below where the links to the information for different areas are on the page, there's a link to the technical documentation. Select it. On this page, find the link to the metadata for the geographic level that you used. We use census track, so I'll choose that link. Metadata means information that describes the data that you're using. When you open any of the tables with the community data, you'll see that after the first few columns, all of the columns in this table have titles that are these strings of letters and numbers. That's because the amount of detail in each census measure contains so many words that they couldn't make each column title be as long as, for example, a string like this. So they give it a unique ID because otherwise the table in the zip file would get too large and unwieldy. You use this sheet to find what unique ID goes with the measure that you want to use on your map. First off, I'll be looking for the measure that I want to map for New York City, Median Household Income. I'll do a search for that term in the technical documentation and look at the descriptions for what comes up until I find the figure that I need. I'll want to make sure that the entry that I pick says estimate instead of margin for error and that it doesn't have any extra variables that I don't care about for my data. If you look down on the sheet, you'll see that some of the median household numbers are classified by race, and if you scroll up, you'll see that there are also measures that show how many homes, not a percentage of them, have what household income. Those may be measures that you'd care about for another project, but for mine, I only wanted the measure of what the median income was for that census tract. Next to the measure that I've chosen, there will be a number that starts with B. That's the column that has this information on a table. It says it's B19013E1. That means it's on the sheet labeled 19 and that the column labeled B19013E1 has the data for the median household income estimate. Within the GEO database that I downloaded, there's a sheet titled X19 Income. I'll drag it onto my table of contents and choose Open. Next, I'll scroll over into the sheet until I find B19013E1. I'm going to rename this column so I know what it is when I look for this measure to graph it. Choose the properties for this field. In this window, change the alias to the name of this measure in the ACS metadata, Median Household Income in the Past 12 Months in 2017 Inflation Adjusted Dollars. Now that you've altered the income table so that you'll be able to see which column you want to display on your map, it's time to join this table to the layer you created of the census tracts in New York City so you can symbolize the differing household incomes in those tracts. To do that, first make sure you know which is the field that contains the census tracts ID in both the income table and the New York City Maps attribute table. They came from the same source, so it's pretty straightforward. In the income table, scroll to the beginning of the table and see that the first column is GOID and the first number is a long string starting with 14,000 US. Now for the ACS 2017 Just NYC map, open the attribute table. You're looking for a column that has numbers that look like the GOID in the income document. That appears to be GOID data since the numbers have the same kind of formatting, 14,000 US followed by a long string of numbers. Go to ACS 2017 Just NYC, choose Joins and Relates, and from there choose Join. You'll choose that the field in the layer that you want the join based on is GOID data, that you want to join the layer to the income table, and when you do that, it will automatically guess the field in the income table 
that you want to use to join the two to be GeoID since it detects that these two fields contain the same data. Select the button for Validate Join. It will go through both tables and make sure that a join will work. If you've done everything right, you'll see that it's matched all of the entries together and all of the items on the list will have a green check next to them. If this Validate Join step went OK, close the box and then on the original pop-up, choose OK. To look at the map, you'd think nothing had changed, but when you open the attribute table for the layer ACS 2017 Just NYC and scroll through, you'll see that there are now a lot of columns that have that B19 naming structure from the income chart. That means you can use these columns to symbolize the data in them for that census tract. Go to the properties for the ACS 2017 Just NYC layer and go to the Symbology page. Currently, it's at Single Symbol. Choose Quantities from the options to the left of the window. From this menu, choose Graduated Colors because you want the map to have differing colors for the census tracts depending on their median household income. Using the Value dropdown, scroll until you find the field named Median Household Income. You'll see that the bottom symbol selection of the window now has five boxes with legends next to them. It went with the green scale for me, but I'll switch to blue using the color ramp drop down here. I'm going to do a little bit of customization. I'll change the number of classes to seven, and I'll change the labels to show in currency since that's what's being displayed. Then I'll choose Apply and close the window. You'll see the map now has varying colors of blue for each census tract based on the median household income for that tract. This lets you see that each borough has different distribution patterns. This is a thing that can help if you have data that you want to compare to some kind of demographic measure. For instance, when I drag the subway stops layer on top of the map, I can see if tracts that do not contain a subway stop have a higher or lower median income then tracts that have one or several. With this package, there are lots of different census numbers you can graph to the census tracts on the map. This can help you ask all kinds of demographic questions about whatever other layers of data you have on your map. For more ArcGIS tutorials, please see the GIS guide on the DASH research guide at lib.manhattan.edu slash dash slash GIS.